Well, it's been a while since we've had a good old episode of Leaf and Barrel. What do you say we fix that? Alright folks, so welcome back to the first episode of Leaf and Barrel in an embarrassingly long amount of time. <laughs> this was supposed to be a segment that I did quite frequently and yeah, shit just kind of went sideways and the months went by and now it's it's been a, like I said, an embarrassingly long amount of time. If you're not familiar with Leaf and Barrel, it is a segment I do on my channel, uh, both my channels actually. The barrel section being a whiskey product that we do a little review on, and the leaf section being a cigar portion. I do that on my second channel, Jeremy Sires After Hours, because, well, YouTube gets a little weird about cigar content. So, we do the whiskey portion, the barrel portion over here, the cigar portion, the leaf portion over there, and we see how the two play together. Sometimes the sum of two parts are greater than the individual, what? The sum of are greater than their, the sum of two are greater than their, comp you know what I'm trying to say. In any event, sometimes magical shit happens when you pair the two. And that's what this is all about. Finding those magical pairings. And usually I let the Patreons vote on what we do in Leaf and Barrel, but we got derailed so bad, I think the last pairing the Patreons voted on, which we'll still do, was, I believe, a Liga Bravada T52 and Woodford Double Oak. However, in my hiatus, a gentleman and a scholar and a member of the Patreon, Ken Martin, sent me this fine bottle of Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, which is the particular whiskey we're gonna be going over tonight. Uh, I paired it up with this, which will go unnamed until the leaf portion, because we don't want to get this shit demonetized, um, but it was magical. So these two skipped to the front of the line over the T-52 and Woodford Double Up. So I apologize to my good folks at the Patreon. I love you guys, I appreciate you guys, but I think you guys will appreciate this once you've tried this pairing. Elijah Craig, you guys have probably had it. It's a very popular bourbon. Uh, a lot of them are, are actually relatively affordable. You got your normal small batch, uh, which I've got a bottle of right over here. 94 proof small batch, really great budget friendly whiskey. Always one that I recommend to folks. Uh, you've got your new toasted barrel. You've got your barrel proofs that they release, uh, I think three times a year, which are usually pretty damn good, if not excellent. You can usually count on good old Elijah Craig to bring the heat. Get us a little pour, let this thing. By the way, if you haven't seen these yet, focus, focus, fo almost, it almost did it. It almost did it. It's, oh, oh yeah. Leaf and Barrel Glen Cairns. Got some Leaf and Barrel Glen Cairns and some Skull Logo Glen Cairns, uh, which I'll link below. I think the Skull Logo ones might be sold out, but we should be getting more of them in pretty soon. Actually, I think all of them are sold out. Depends on when this video releases. They might all be sold out, but we're supposed to be getting more soon, so check the link below. But um, this, unfortunately, is a version of this stuff. I could not find. So thank God for Ken Martin for sending me this because I have not seen this in my area. It was a new release in 2020. One of the few good things that came out in 2020, let's be honest, 2020 sucked ass. I have had this multiple times before. So let me get out the old whiskey Bible, see how my notes stack up against what we're tasting tonight. So Elijah Craig, uh, Supposedly one of the originators of bourbon. Arguably, some people will say he was the grandfather, kind of the original guy that aged spirit in a charred oak barrel, which then became bourbon. Um, I think that claim is highly disputed, so not sure if that's true or not. Elijah Craig uh, comes out of the Heaven Hill Distillery, if you did not know. This particular mash bill is 78% corn, 12% malted barley, 10% rye, which is the exact same mash bill as the normal small batch because this toasted barrel is just the small batch, a fully matured batch of small batch that they then dump and then they rebarrel into a toasted barrel for an undisclosed amount of months to give it the toasted barrel finish. Me personally, I'm a huge fan of toasted barrel finishes. Your second toasted or second charred barrel whiskeys. Michter's has several of them. 
They have their sour mash toasted barrel. They have a, rye, a barrel strength rye toasted barrel. They have a regular toasted barrel. I think that's all from Michter's. Then Woodford Double Oaked is the second barreling. I think theirs is like a charred, not toasted, but nevertheless, Double Oaked, one of my favorites. That's a second barrel kind of product. 1910 is a second barrel type situation uh, from Old Forester, another one of my favorites. Usually spirits that are barreled a second time in a toasted or second more charred barrel usually gives it a nice sweet flavor that, that uh, I usually enjoy. You get hit with the sweetness right off the rip. Kind of a marshmallowy. A lot of people say marshmallow, and I fully understand that. Get your caramels, your brown sugar. The, the, the main thing I'm getting right in the front, obviously bourbon. You can smell whiskey. But if you get past the whiskey, there's a very sweet, sweet nose on this. It's a brown sugar, caramel, marshmallowy kind of vibe. A little bit of an apple-y kind of situation. And there's a tad bit of that, that wood. Really? Nothing. Man, this stuff does smell good. I love this stuff. Like I said, big, big fan. All right, let's get our first sip. Some people say it's obnoxious, the amount of swishing I do, but it's what I like to do. You do you, I'll do me. That is super sweet, but not like super overly sweet, like the screwball. I don't know if you guys watched the video I put out last week, but not like that. A very nice amount of sweetness. Tiny, tiny bit of dryness on the very end there, but on the palate on the front, you get hit with this really super sweet caramel, brown sugar, marshmallow, kind of a little bit of a baking spice vibe. Behind that comes in a little bit of an oakiness, get a little bit of that oak, a little bit of oaky spiciness. Kind of reminds me of actually 1910 in a way that you kind of can get like a little bit of a tobacco vibe. And I don't mean really like cigar tobacco, I mean more like a sweet pipe tobacco, like a Lane BCA type tobacco or something like that. It's like this kind of sweet tobacco flavor. This stuff is only 94 proof. So, you know, I shouldn't say only. 94 is a very respectable proof, but point is it's not a proof that's gonna really like burn you to death. It's got a nice, you know it's there, but it's also very smooth and, and drinkable. Not an overly thick mouthfeel. That's what she said. <laughs> 94 proof, fairly thin. I heard people describe this as a s'more, and I can definitely see how people would explain it as that, because you do get this kind of, like I said, this brown sugar sweetness, caramel, a little bit of a graham cracker kind of vibe. I can see a graham cracker. I get that marshmallow vibe. Uh, I get it in the Michters also. I get it in a lot of these toasted barrel things, that, that kind of toasted marshmallow kind of vibe, which I guess is makes sense because marshmallows are kind of like a burnt or toasted sugar. And that's kind of the flavor you get in this, kind of like a, a brown or caram car caramel. Brown or caramel? <laughs> a brown caramel, uh, a brown sugar or a caramel, which is just kind of like a cooked sugar kind of thing. So definitely those s'more vibes. And there is a little bit of a chocolate kind of it's not on the front in the front i get hit with the sugars and the sweetness and then as it progresses toward the more dry woody on the way past i get kind of like a little bit of like a dark chocolate kind of thing which again just adds to why a lot of people call this s'mores i totally get it s'mores is a, is a very accurate description you get a little bit of an apple and a lot of bourbons uh, which i get a little bit of that in this one too almost kind of like a citrus note at times getting toward that back end where you get that little bit of uh, oak bitterness comes through just a little bit at the end. So, I mean, it's nuances. So if anybody ever says, I keep trying whiskey, I keep trying whiskey, and I hear all these people that review whiskeys pull all these, these notes and I don't get them, it's nuances. So don't expect just to be smacked in the face and drink this and be like, oh, that absolutely tastes just like I just ate a s'mores because it's it's not that smack you in the face, right? It's, it's a more nuanced thing, resembles or reminds you of that other than a direct copy. I don't know if any of that shit I just said makes sense, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to relay to you guys to help you guys with your tasting journey. Comes in at MSRP at about $50. I mean, I think this stuff's great. For 50 bucks, I'm not gonna complain at all. I think that's right in line with most of the other second barrel products. Your, like I said, your Woodford Double Oaks are coming at about 50. Most of your Old Forester, 1920, 1910, well, 1920 is not a double uh, barrel, but 1910 is. That's about 50, 55 bucks. 
your Michter's MSRPs are around that. I've never gotten Michter's for that, the Michter's toasted barrel stuff for that. I always end up paying over MSRP for it because it's kind of hard to find. But I think $50 is a super fair price for it. It's really enjoyable. If you like stuff that's a little on the sweeter side, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I got a little bit of the, I haven't had a, a pour of the small batch in quite a while. Just the regular old small batch. So I'm gonna pour just a tiny little bit of that real quick just to compare. Because like I said, this toasted barrel is just the small batch, completely matured and could be bottled as small batch, but then they go ahead and throw it in a second barrel, a second toasted barrel for a little while to bring out that sweet. So just curious to see how these. Oh wow, yeah, that's huge. And you know, this is another thing for you guys that are getting into tasting whiskey and stuff. I think AB comparisons really help you find flavors and stuff sometimes, right? Because when you taste this by itself, you might be like, oh, I don't know if I taste the brown sugar or I don't know if I taste the marshmallow or whatever. But then when you taste it next to something else, the comparison really kind of helps you bring it out. Like, yeah, this smells so much sweeter than the small batch. Small batch to me right now, I'm getting like some cinnamon, getting the citrusy notes, maybe some green apple. This one hasn't had enough, hasn't had as much time to open up and breathe, so I'm getting a lot of alcohol. Actually a lot of oak. Citrus, apple, cinnamon, that kind of situation. Going from that, the, the, the toasted, man, the toasted, right off the rip, you get hit with like caramel. Like you can distinctly smell that like caramel, almost like a caramel apple, honestly. But way sweeter, way, way sweeter. So let's give the small batch a taste. Small batch is really good too though, I'm not gonna lie. But definitely not near sweet. There's definitely way more oak. I don't remember the small batch being quite that oaky actually. But I guess, again, this is one of those things where it's like, oh, I don't taste the oak in small batch when I taste it. Well. Drink it next to some, some of the toasted barrel and you'll taste the oak. <laughs> this, I, I'm getting more oak. I'm getting some like baking spice or some cinnamon, a little bit of apple, maybe a little dark chocolate kind of vibe in there. Uh, uh, and as it finishes, there's like a, a little bit of a subtle sweetness. I mean, really good, but man, let me go back to the toasted. Already. Yeah. Way sweeter, way more brown sugar. I mean, you can definitely tell these two are related, right? Cause I'm kind of getting a little bit of a, kind of like a crisp Granny Smith apple, almost to a citrusy kind of vibe out of both of them and the wood in both of them, but the wood and the apple-y citrusy kind of situation, cinnamon kind of spice, I'm getting way more in this, where in the toasted, the brown sugar marshmallowy kind of vibe is the dominant flavor. You're still getting the, the oak and the other stuff in there, but it's it's under like a heavier sweetness that's on top where this one, the sweetness is kind of down below and more subtle. I can't imagine anybody not enjoying a pour of this. I cannot wait to pair it with this in the leaf portion of the leaf and barrel because man, is it good. And I actually, you know me, I'm a cigar and whiskey kind of guy. I never enjoy whiskey as much if I'm not smoking a cigar because I think they're just great together. That is Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. That is the barrel portion of the Leaf and Barrel. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was good getting back in the saddle. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. For all you guys that are into cigars and see what we're gonna get into, pair this up with in the next video. As always, down below I will link and I'll put in the thumbnail thing, uh, link over to the bear, or to the leaf portion of this week's Leaf and Barrel. If you are not into cigars and you're just here for the whiskey, I completely understand, no hard feelings. This is where we will part ways and I will see you guys in the next video.